guys going to do a little overview today of the Taurus TX-22 that I just got um, this is not going to be like a review or anything because I haven't shot this gun yet but I do plan on shooting it very soon and I'm going to get some range footage and then I'll give you my thoughts and everything on like how it shoots and talk about the reliability you know because this is 22 you know reliability is is you know always iffy when it comes to 22 but everything I've heard about this gun uh, is that it's great it's reliable but yeah I'm just gonna talk about it a little here today so first we'll safety check it everything's good and um so yeah first thing you notice when you pick this gun up is it's very light very lightweight it's a polymer frame aluminum slide the only parts that are steel is the barrel and there's a little steel insert inside the slide which I'll show to you but looking on the outside of the gun it actually don't look too bad it looks fairly sporty you have a uh, good slide serrations right here and you got front slide serrations you know for anybody that wants to tactically press check their 22 it does have uh, it has the little TX mark right there on both sides, which is kind of cool. And it kind of like a uh, flat now angles up up here on the top. It's got your traditional uh, three dot sights, and they are fully adjust. The rear sight is fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Um. This gun is half ambi, I guess you could say, because it does have the ambidextrous uh, safety on both sides, and you can switch the mag release over to the other side, but the slide stop is only on one side, and this is actually uh, a slide stop and slide release, so it works as both. So we'll see how that works at the range. Um, the texturing on the grip here is actually not bad. Now I hate overly aggressive texturing. I will sand it down. I will sand it down in a heartbeat. I've done it on, on some of my other guns. But this right here don't actually feel too bad. It's nice and textured and without being overly aggressive but you still get a nice good grip on the gun and you know that's actually one thing I really like about this is it it fits the hand really good like it it fills up the hand I don't have very large hands so there's still a lot of grip left there but it is not a small gun this is um I believe this is a four inch barrel if I remember right but um so yeah the texturing on this is nice the grip it's really nice it just it feels good in the hand it has a natural good point it has a pretty decent low borax boraxes or however you say it I don't know it has a nice little swoop up in here so you can get a nice high grip on it trigger guard to square it off you can get a gloved finger up in here you know which is a good thing for all you people up north I live in Florida so I don't you know I don't never have a gloved hand and of course you know I'm not a tactical operator, so I don't wear gloves every time I shoot. That's why I don't like overly textured grips, because, you know, I'm not an operator, believe it or not. I'm, I'm a gun guy that's not an operator. So, it's got a 1913 rail. It's got two slots. I haven't attached anything to this yet, but I will. I'll try it out. Maybe I'll do some, attach my light to it and do some shooting with it at the range. Um, talk about the magazines. I have it comes with two. This is the one. Uh, these magazines are very lightweight because they're all plastic except for the metal spring that's inside. But and I've heard some people in different videos kind of question the reliability on these, you know, on on these plastic mags. But I'm like, eh. They seem built sturdy enough, and I mean, it's not the first polymer mag out there. I mean, 
people do use polymer mags and AR-15s and they seem to work fine and yeah I mean I'm not saying that these are like the same quality as P-Mag or Hex or Lancer or, or whatever your favorite polymer magazine is but um they don't there's no flex in them so yeah seem to be okay to me these are really easy to load there's three ways that you can load it you can uh, kind of pull down on these little tabs here and load them in you can just load them straight in like a normal magazine it has these little guide slots right here where you put the rim in and you kind of slide in it it makes it really makes it easy to load this magazine it also comes with a little tiny magazine loader which I don't have right here so yeah sorry about that but yeah these hold 16 mag these hold 16 rounds and um they're kind of staggered in there which allows which I guess is the design that keeps it reliable so don't get rim lock because you know how most of your 22 magazines are and most of them are 10 rounds but this one's 16 so this gun is 16 plus one but yeah um let's go ahead and let's weigh it because this thing is really light and I watched videos on this but I don't remember what the weight was so get my scale in here I know this scale is like what the hell a little fancy isn't it but yeah I, it's big because I, I got I use it for uh, want to separate meat and stuff so I can weigh it out all right let's weigh it with the magazine in Yeah, so there you go. What is that? 19 ounces? Mm -hmm. Oh, one pound, 1.4 ounce. Okay. It's hard to tell from the angle of the camera when you're looking through it. One pound, 1.4 ounce. So there you go. It's not too heavy oh actually hold on let me let me do something real quick let's turn that back on let's just weigh the magazine because I'm curious to see how much this thing weighs it's so light wow no one and a half ounce damn I got pocket knives that weigh more than that All right. So now this is a fixed barreled gun. It means this it don't lock it that don't tilt. It's not a tilting system. So you see when it's locked back, it's in. It's not tilted up. It's just it holds its position. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this is this has a little. Um, thread cover here you can take this off and you can put on it comes with this comes uh, this little adapter here this little half by 28 adapter that you can put on there and it allows you to put a um, suppressor on it so I think I will pick me up one I think I will pick me up a suppressor and uh and it's for this gun because uh yeah why not america the only thing is though is it's really nice that they provide this for a gun for this price i mean i think the msrp on this is 350 and right now with with covid and all the panic buying i think these things are going for about 320. i bought this from a friend of mine i'm, I'm giving him I gave him 250 for it because it's it's barely been shot just a couple times. But uh, yeah, I wish they would uh they don't give you a thread protector for this. So if you leave this on, if you want to leave this on your gun, you might need to order um just go online and see if you can find a thread protector for it because you don't want those threads to get messed up. 
But yeah, it would have been nice if they would have just gave us one with it. But it's nice that they gave it to us. So, but yeah, it's the fixed belt design. So, um, the, the cool thing is though, is when you take it apart, the slide, I mean, the barrel does not stay attached. So it is fixed barreled, but it does not uh, stay on. I'll show you. Let's go ahead and take this apart. So it pretty much breaks down like the G2C or a Glock. So you're just gonna wanna pull the trigger, which by the way, this has a really nice trigger, but I'll get into that later when I put the gun back apart or put together, put the gun back together. So be cock it, pull the slide back slightly. Find the tabs. There they go. Then it goes forward slightly and just comes off straight up. And as you can see, the barrel is not attached to the frame. So here's the inside. Here is the spring. Is a little 22 spring, so it's not very stiff. It is polymer rod, metal spring. There's the barrel. There's the, the where it locks up and everything. Your itty bitty little feed ramp. Now here is the little metal part that I was telling you about that's inside the slide. So, or just not metal, steel part. So that part and this part is the only steel part. And uh, well, I imagine I think some of this is metal too, but yeah. But uh, that's why this thing's so lightweight, very lightweight. But yeah, there's not a whole lot to show you in there. It's just simple machining I really do think Taurus is getting pretty good at their giving us a little bit better quality and the craftsmanship and everything for the price of their guns I don't have no problem with Taurus I actually own quite a bit of them they get a bad they got a bad rap in the early days especially with their semi-autos their revolvers have always been pretty decent I have one of the revolvers it's from the 80s and it works just fine I'm gonna put this back together. I wanna make sure that uh this part is what well, you wanna make sure that this part is facing outwards and this part is facing inwards. Alright, now Putting this thing back together is a little weird because you saw how it came off, like it just and it comes straight off. So you kind of put it back together the same way. You're gonna want to try to get this the guide rod like up in this area right here. So sometimes it's I still Still a little finicky for me. It's only the third time I've taken this gun apart. Took it apart when I first got it. Took it apart when I cleaned it, and then right there. So getting faster. Function check. Oh, it works. But I want to show you a reset. Right there was the reset. And then you have a little take up, and bam. Now, the trigger on this is very decent. <laughs> it does have a lot of take up. You hit all the way there, all the way there, all the way there. And then you hit a wall. When you get to that wall, 
just go a little bit further and it breaks it's not a clean break but it breaks but this is not a very heavy trigger I, I think what they say is about four and a half pounds so it's not bad and from what I hear online you can dry fire this gun so I know in a lot of 22s you're not supposed to but uh you know I think it's okay in this one since you have to uh, dry fire to disassemble it now one thing I want to talk about too before I go because I almost forgot is that you cannot activate this safety unless it's been cocked so and uh the night and you know that's fine I mean I'm not a big fan of safeties but on a 22 like this this is fine because this is just a this is just gonna be a range gun a fun gun you know maybe train or not really train but like teach my uh, niece and nephew and anybody that wants to learn you know how to shoot uh, on this gun you know start them off with this and then you know go to a nine millimeter or, or whatever but yeah uh, the safety goes on has a nice positive on and then really nice to turn off harder to turn on than it is to turn off so yeah decent trigger but yeah I can't wait to get this thing out to the range I picked this up because I have lots of 22 ammo because I have a 22 rifle but it's an old Marlin it's a Glenfield Marlin model 60 from the 70s and I just hate taking that thing apart and cleaning it so I never shoot it I have thousands of rounds of 22 ammo and with the price of everything being so damn expensive right now I was like I need a 22 handgun so I can go at least go to the range and do some plinking so that was my biggest reason for getting this but I really do like this pistol and uh so yeah but I want to wrap it up there guys um, like I said, I'm going to take this gun to the range. Um, I'll show you what ammo I'm going to run through it. i got a bunch of different types of ammo that I'm going to run. They'll all be in a, a separate video. And um, So yeah, uh, if you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want, if you want to see more, subscribe, share with your friends, and have a good one. Bye.